It's your boy Project Pat up in this thing, man. Y'all know how we get down. When I'm in Virginia, I'm always messing with Miss Hollywood 313 and Session 420. You know what I'm saying? It's going down every time I'm in Virginia. Y'all need to follow my people. Miss Hollywood 313 and Session 420. Pata. Is it me or was it hiding here? Yeah. Is it me or was it hiding so here? So Hollywood H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood H O double L Y double U double O. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get ignorant. The Hollywood lights are bright. Let's get right for a little bit. The vibe's so low, so let's go and bump it a little bit. Let's celebrate life like it's gonna end in a little bit. Hit the bottom a little twist and mix it with some of this. And mix it with Hollywood and you fall from monotonous. Imagine the gas can't even produce more hotness than this hip hop pop. It's a female accomplice. Hey, H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood, H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood, H O double L Y double U double O. So Hollywood, H O double L Y double U double O. Is it me or was it hiding here? Is it me or was it hiding here? Hey, 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 what up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me, yes, once again, Miss Hollywood. <laughs> You're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. Uh, if you don't know, i like to tell you so. Uh, so Hollywood, the podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally, and I bring them together with this thing called entertainment. My mouth is cotton mouth like a bitch. <laughs> I ain't even gonna front. Uh, I look, see, I really love this show because you could be yourself. And, uh, anyways, yes, I like to do a recap uh, of my last episode, in which you can also find on my YouTube page, uh, So Hollywood Podcast. And uh, I, I had a guest by the name of Jay Ski. He's a Buffalo native. He's signed to Drumworks, which is Conway the Machine. Um, He's his record label. Uh, so if you want to see that, of course you want to see that. Go to my YouTube page. Catch the latest episodes on my YouTube page as well. Uh, and if you want to be a guest, just hit me up in my DM. It's Hollywood313. Or go to www.allofhollywood.biz. Um, and without further ado, I want to bring my special guest. Let me get some water because I... <sighs> Y'all hear that? That's so clear. <laughs> my special guest today is he's a music producer um a project manager a booking agent he has um waves foundation waves apparel and he's also a part of official red cup gang um i believe he's from richmond but we're going to get into that his name is mike Wait. <laughs> What up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the long intro. I get long with it sometimes, but hey, it is all good. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing uh better now that I had some water. Uh, I was definitely cotton mouth. No, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's get into it. How did uh how did this thing called entertainment enter your life? Um, since I was a kid, um, you know, my dad was in a band. Mm -hmm. So, like, I remember being on stage with him when I was, like, three, four. So, yeah, he... Um, what kind of band? A uh, rock band. They did a... I mean, he was in one, I guess, before I was thought of, where they did all original stuff. And okay. I guess that didn't really work out. But, um, yeah, he just did a lot of covers and stuff. Oh, he okay. Just, yeah, okay. he just he just enjoyed it. In the Richmond area? Are you from Richmond? Yes, yes. And you born were born and raised? Okay, born, born and raised. Because yep. Richmond has a lot of talent, but we're going to get into that as well. But, yeah. Um, so, continue. I, I apologize. Um, I like to interrupt sometimes. So, oh, just, yeah, no, just let did, me know did, if I'm overstepping my boundaries. You feel me? So, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, so, um, yeah. So, pretty much, I don't know. I've just always, I've always been around it my whole life. My mm -hmm. dad played bass guitar. I've been playing. Wow. I learned how to play bass. It was in, like nine or ten and then what? um yeah the i heard the carter three and then i just i don't know what so yeah. th was that your first introduction to like hip-hop or you know that was the, the first one that, like really stuck okay 
Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. like, you know, I was listening to a lot of the classic rock stuff okay. before that. Okay. And then, yeah, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne changed my life. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. What? Did you know Lil Wayne before he was Lil Wayne or once he became? Because, you know, he was in a um, group like Hot Boys and, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that. I mean, yeah, I did my all of my back. Okay, research. understood. As soon understood. as I heard of that, course, I was. Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so was he like how how did he influence you like in um, what way? I don't know. It was just it was just different. Like even like I mean now that I've been producing for like ten eleven years, like I'm I can like look at the beats and just you can hear how different they were. Right. Just the whole the music in general. Like I don't know. It just it just caught my attention. Right. And that was yeah. what around what age you said. Um, I'd say I was probably in seventh or eighth grade. So that's about high school. Because I'm middle school is middle school seventh. Grade. Yeah, ninth grade. What am I? See, look. Yeah. Don't smoke, kids. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, no, it's all good. But I mean, you know, I mean, I'm I'm 26 now. So oh, however, dang. yeah. So so how? Yeah. However I'm long. I'm about to be 38. That's a good thing, though. But. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, so eighth or ninth grade, were you? Did you participate in any like activities as far as like, um, like band or you know those type of things when you were in school? No. So you had no kind of music music background uh, outside of your dad being in the band. Yeah, no, that was pretty much it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. I don't know. I didn't do a whole lot of extracurriculars in school. To be honest. With you. Wow, it's okay. It's okay. And so, what what made you actually become? Did okay. So produ- producing came first, correct? Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd and, say like slowly but surely. Like even like when I didn't even realize what I was trying to do on FL. Mm. It was just you know like I got a cracked version of FL one day. I can't tell you what made me do it. Right. But, you know I was on LimeWire or whatever it was back then, and I got the crack to work, and I just started playing with stuff. You just yeah. just moving stuff, learning the things. Yeah, Because yeah. back in the day, I don't think YouTube was was YouTube really has like a yeah, part of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went to I went to YouTube Academy. Oh, yep. what? Yeah, for real? Well, no, nah, like you know, you go on YouTube and you <laughs> learn everything on YouTube. You know, yeah. What? Yeah. And then so that's pretty much what that, led you to yeah. become a music producer, and then we're here now. Yeah, pretty much. And Fruity Loop, like, wow, a lot of people do talk about Fruity Loops. Like, and then what, so once you found Fruity Loops, what did you do with it exactly? Um, uh, I just started playing with stuff. Like, I mean, I, I guess I realized that channel rack was just supposed to be for the drums and the drum patterns. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just the way they have it laid out. It's almost like, I mean, just like I tell everybody, it's like a second grade pattern. If you just know where to put stuff right, and figure it out, you'll start to just catch on from there. Right. And then, um, yeah. Mm. And then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was so long ago. I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Talk that shit. That's right. <laughs> So what did you what did you um graduate to as far as the the software goes once you figured out Fruity Loops and are, do you still or do you still use Fruity Loops? All right, so um I used Fruity Loops up until I was probably like 20. Okay. 21 and then I met Andrew Hypes. Okay. Shout um, out to Andrew. Yeah, shout out my guy Andrew. Um he um I think my computer broke or something and he and he just told me to get a Mac. So I got the Mac, and then um, I ended up messing with Machine. I was on Machine and Logic for probably two or three years. Mm-hmm. And then um, as soon as FL20 came out for Mac, I was, went right back. <laughs> you went right Went right back, yep. Because that's, like, literally your go-to because you know pretty much the it's ins just, and outs. Yeah, of... it's just it's just easier. Right, it's just easier. right. And have you made your, like, your major hits with that as well? Pretty much everything. I mean, everything. Yeah, 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 pretty much everything's been through FL in some, some way, shape, or form. But mm-hmm. um, you know, it it also depends on like the type of record I'm doing. Like mm-hmm. if I like if I'm doing more sampling, then obviously I'm gonna use machine. But um, yeah, definitely definitely FL heavy though. Mm. FL heavy. It, at least the drums end up I end up going in FL for those. Did you also do drum kits and in in? Um, I did beats. for a little bit, but I mean, it you just start to realize that you know you the you can go online and get any sound you want. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, well, I mean. I mean, 
<laughs> I would I would I would definitely like people to buy from me, but why? You know what I'm saying? If right. you could go on Splice and get whatever you need from Southside to Lex to be billionaire and all them. Gotcha. Murder beats. Gotcha. You know. Mm. So what was the, I'm going to retract a little bit. What was the, the scene like growing up in the Richmond area for you? Um, when I was younger, it seemed to be lit. You know what I'm saying? Like we had Epic Fest. Um, my man, um, Octavian, we, it's funny. We actually, we actually met probably, probably about a year ago, but, um, he was the big guy in Richmond, him and um, this other guy, Kane, they had Slapdash and, um, they were really putting on a majority of the shows and stuff like that and really uh, giving artists the opportunity um out there but um yeah i mean i don't know it was there there were a whole lot more showcases and stuff going on when i was younger gotcha it, you know mm -hmm. i mean now it just kind of seems like you know everybody trying to do the same thing and, exactly you know it's just there's really no um it seems like there's no end goal behind any of it it's not like anybody's trying to break an artist or anything or really like get behind anybody you know what i mean and why, why do you feel that way i don't know or why do you think that it's it's like that now? Because we were once, uh, like, we were once that Atlanta, that go-to place to be like, oh, man, Virginia. Because, you know, you hear it, you hear about it in a lot of songs. Like, I think a lot of it's just, like, see, like, Richmond, there's a lot of people that, you know, um, they're stuck in Richmond for whatever reason. I don't know why. But, like, I mean, I've been coming up to the beach for, like, the past six, seven years. Wow. You know, so it's like, I... You know, I've built my little clientele or people I right. deal with out here, just like I have people I deal with in Richmond. But um, I can definitely tell, like, the dramatic difference right. between both markets. And it's like, it's really crazy to me because I even remember on Clubhouse, I don't know if you were in there, but I used to tell people, man, just drive up the street to Virginia Beach. Yeah. And, you, you know, like, because that, because there's so much more shows and there's more people that um, can really help you right. more, you know what I'm saying, and actually want to help. Right. Rather than, you know, Richmond, it seems like every, everything for a lot of these artists, um, everyone on the behind the scenes, it's like a money, like it's just quick money grab. Okay. You know? Okay. And, yeah. Because, I mean, pretty much everybody that was really, really trying to help um, ended up moving to either Atlanta or L.A. or wherever. Right. You know what I mean? So it was, it, then it just became just another place with talented people. That yeah. Just yeah. Did, yeah. You know, there's there's just no guidance. Right. That's the that's that's the best way to put it. Mm. No is that just? Do you feel that it's just in um, in Richmond, or is that like in this you know in the seven cities as well? Um, I think there's more guidance here mm. than there is in Richmond, in my opinion, and from what I've seen. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you already know you got people like Batman up here that's always willing to help. Shout people. out to Batman, and you know, like we don't really have anybody up up our way that you know leading um, the way and that, just... that's only like a marketing guy or only mm. does some behind the scenes stuff you know what i mean yeah um i mean we we definitely have our people up there that you know be providing opportunities and stuff um i want to shout out noah o. he's you know he's always been solid been a good role model for uh, a lot of the younger artists and everything mm -hmm. but you know yeah richmond because i hear a lot of like great things about it but i just feel like the same as in Virginia Beach or anywhere. I'm like, it's just, it's a lack of something that Virginia well, as a whole. Yeah. And I, as well. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I will say, as of recently, like, there's a lot of stuff being built up in Richmond mm -hmm. that, you know, I already know a few years down the line, they can really, really do something. Like, Benefit, you have mm -hmm. um, the music shop over at um, their, their office is on Broad Street. It, uh, they're uh, partnered with the collective. Mm -hmm. And um, you know they're 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 a pretty good big uh, blog outlet. They don't really play favorites or anything. Um, you know, it's just you know it just it just takes time. That's all it is. Now, also, um, growing up, how was the support um, in your life when you were <clears throat> when you did decide to pursue like this thing called entertainment? Um, support from who? Um, just. <laughs> your people around you oh yeah no 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 just you yeah. know i mean i always had the support from you know what i'm saying my friends and my peers um i think it all just came with um how hard i worked mm -hmm. and um i never really took no for an answer i guess mm -hmm. but um you know my mom my dad would always trip but you know um once i mean once they saw i could pay my bills with it then you know they were they yeah. were more <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah, you know, and I mean, and I mean, they they knew this was what I was gonna do. 
you know, it was either. And you knew, how did, so when did you, when was that pivotal moment in your life that was like, okay, I'm going to be a producer and this is going to be my end all be all situation? Um, I don't know, probably when I would sign up for school and then skip class to go, <laughs> go to the studio or something and end up failing out. Wow. Yeah, it happened like three times. I was just like, all right, I'm done wasting money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, no, I mean, I don't know. I just couldn't get away from it. it, it like, as much as I tried to, I just couldn't, you know. I mean, I look at it like, like I mean, music saved my life, for real, for real. Wow. People, people don't even realize that. Like, I was, you know, I was in the streets heavy at one point. Like, just, you know. And then I charged. Wild just, and reckless. Yeah, charges started <laughs> racking up, lawyer fees and all that. But, Whoa. But you, but, you know, it's just, um. Nothing to brag about or anything. Of course. It's just, you know. It's, the, it's your life. It's your yeah, experience. Yeah, because, I mean, with the, with the music stuff, um, not even just with producing, like, really any of it, even if you're an artist or anything, like, just like I try to explain to everybody, if you learn how to sell, then the money's just like if you were in the streets mm. and all that, because, I mean, everything sales. Right. Everything. Right. And, um, yeah, I, I, I everything think. Everything got a price. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, it's just not, not even just selling product, but just, you know, if you're in a room with, um, you know, with some label heads and stuff, you got to sell yourself to them, Facts. you know? And I mean, Facts. if if you can't sell yourself, then, you know, you're going to have wasted everybody's time. Right. You know? Back to the drawing board. Exactly. And, you know, <sighs> nobody wants to do that, but that's why I, I uh, stress sales so much because... You know, sales is sales is everything. Mm-hmm. We all we all we are selling all day, every day, and we don't even realize it. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. In all shapes and forms, like right now, like a whole whole advertisement on your shirt, on your hat. Speaking of of your hat, yeah. shout out to you with your apparel line. <laughs> appreciate you, appreciate you. But yeah. And so, um, so when was that exact moment? Um, I don't know. I've always wanted to do it. Okay. I've, I'm, okay. I've always wanted to just do music. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I I feel like it was just one of those things. Like you know, I saw my dad doing it for so long. Gotcha. That it was almost just like embedded into my head. Right. But um, yeah. I mean, I I yeah. I I really couldn't tell you the first <laughs> time it clicked. It's just I've always done it. It's just been a consistent thing in your yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it was just me listening to music, mm. it's like I always just had to have music on, or I was more. I would rather listen to music than. You know, watch the football game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. Music save your life. Mm-mm-mm. So, okay, so let's move forward to your um, your your meetings with uh, Red Cup Gang, and because I know that I, that's like I guess way down the line, or is that yeah, recently? that's probably what is it? Probably a year and a half ago. Okay, it's okay. funny. Um, Terrell just DM me one day, like I guess like right in the beginning of the pandemic, he just DM me and was like, "Yo, like." You want to work? And we got, <laughs> then we uh, we uh, got on the phone. And I kept telling him, like, yo, bro, you sure? Because, you know, all, like, all this COVID stuff, my wife's an RN. Like, she's on the COVID unit. Like, right. You sure? You want? He's like, bro, I don't care. Come on. Come on. And then I finally went out there. And, um, and yeah, no, I mean, Terrell's taught me a lot, man. He taught me, that man taught me how to sell, like, more than I already knew how to sell. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he's yeah, definitely he, one of those sales. Because he, if he's getting six figures off of, merch and all the stuff that he's doing out there in, in LA he's definitely one because he's yeah. he's been at it for a long time as well for sure for sure and I mean you can tell when you talk to him yeah and, I mean it was just one of those things where I think I needed somebody that was you know older but also like an artist to really um help me take my stuff to the next level because um you know for a while there I was just kind of making beats just and to make yeah just well to... I mean like I would just assume somebody would come across it and buy gotcha. it yeah but, gotcha. you know, like, he, like, really taught me how to sell and just, you know, just really bring everything on the business side to that next level. Mm-hmm. So, so who who was your <clears throat> who was your first beat um, sent to? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's probably that man over there, Key. What? Yeah, he used to rap back in the day. <laughs> so what is his uh, Instagram handle? What's your Instagram handle? What is it? Solar No Man. No more that. Listen, listen. Solar nomad. There form. you go. We're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, but not. Nah, nah, I need nah, to nah, help Kiki. with fried chicken, macaroni, and cheese. That's what that was. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, he could definitely wrap his ass off. He wow. definitely could wrap his ass off. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. I would have known. Never known. Got to get you up here next time. <laughs> yeah. So who was your first major 
person that got on one of your beats? Um, um, I don't know. I mean, what's your definition of major? Um, let's see, cause I, I, that's a good question for me. That's a good ping pong right there. Mm. Cause I mean, <laughs> cause I don't like to call them celebrities. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm gonna be real. Like, um, as far as like major, major, I mean, I got a, I think. Me and Crazy definitely have a record in the cut. Okay. That would but, be, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, since I've been working with Terrell, I really haven't been worried about anyway. the whole placement side of stuff. Like, just because, I mean, the placements is kind of like, like, it's it's cool, but, mm-hmm. like, that shit a whole nother job in itself. Like, right. You know, you sending emails and doing all that, then you got to worry about so of getting you, everything on the back end and making sure everything's straight and right. shit not straight, then, you know, it's just... It's a headache. Because, I mean, Terrell, like, what, what we've been able to do is, you know, I'm assuming you've heard his music from before. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, we've been able I to, I used like, to work, we used to work together. When oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, <laughs> so, yeah, we were able to, like, just meet in the middle because I think I sent him, like, 80 beats or something. Wow. But, yeah, this man called me and said, yeah, bro, I'm going to be real. I'm, they're not bad. I'm just not rapping on all of them because I was sending them super trappy. Mm, okay. Like, you know, shit, I should have been sending Gucci or some shit. Right. But, um, no, we were able to meet in the middle and really, like, you know, I was able to give them kind of, like, that club bounce, I guess. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. also we were able to, you know, me and, um, and his other producer in Philly were able to really – just cre- yeah, yeah, and just create like a like a like a newer newer sounding. Was that during the process yeah. of the tour, or was that before the tour? That was before the tour. Okay. We were, yeah, okay, yeah. This was bro during the pandemic. Everybody was talking about staying inside. Yeah. We, we was in Atlanta. We was in Philly. <laughs> we was fuck. Roads were wide open. We were getting to, <laughs> we were getting to Richmond to here in like forty five minutes. Like oh damn. Yeah, n- nah. Like it was wide open. No cops. No nothing. <laughs> it was crazy, but. But yeah, no, I mean, but that, you know, that's why when people try to blame the pandemic on shit, it's just like, I mean, y'all didn't want to do anything. Right. Y'all make sacrifices. Yeah, y'all didn't want to do Yeah, because I mean, I took everything to the next level during the pandemic, which is why I'm able to, you know, do do what I'm doing now. Right. <clears throat> so what So what was that that you did? Like, what was that, that I guess, that transition for you that, um, that helped, you know, that, I guess, I don't want to say the alley but... Um, well, really, I just started focusing more on, like, money, like, what's making the money. Like, right, you know, okay. Like, producing might not make you the money, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I learned how to do websites, I've learned, um... Because you got booking agent, yeah, you got I, your I, apparel, yeah, I was, project um, manager. Yeah, yeah, I was able to, um, help, um, Octavian X do a lot of booking and stuff, um, toward the back end of the pandemic, and then, okay. um, yeah, and then just all that other stuff is just... You, <laughs> Everything is self-taught? I, um, yeah, but no, I mean, like, you know, Batman helped me learn a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Octavian helped me learn a lot of it. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm also the type of person where I'm going to, you know, give it 110 and go on YouTube and gotcha. also learn it myself. Right. Because I mean, if I don't do it, I'm not going to learn it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's just, I just kind of took that time to really like buckle down and just learn all the other things. So it's not like I'm just trying to. Make you, trying be to be a producer. Yeah, and, like, just hope and pray someone yeah. buys something. Like, nah. mm, You know mm. what I mean? Like, because um, I even, like, ran into it recently. It's like, I don't want to depend on that to be how I'm making my money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it's like, it, it just kind of takes the takes the fun out of it. Because then you got you to gotta say yes to <laughs> people you don't want to work with. Right. And, you know, like, e- even on the engineering side. I mean, I can engineer all day. But it's just like, I don't, I'm at this point where I'm done dealing with, you know. Um, just people that don't have any type of goal mm. or are even trying to get there. Cause I mean, there's a lot of people that, that have booked me in the past, just trying to figure out how to do something or something. But it's just like, bro, like, I mean, what do you want me to do? Like, like I can make a call, but why, like, what am I going to tell them? Like, right. Oh, I got this artist in here from wherever they haven't really done anything. <laughs> don't know. Right. What, like, it's just, you know, right. I don't know. It's just it just all became a headache. Name, it's, it's your name on the line at the end. No, of the for day. sure, for sure. So it's just like you know, you if you're telling them what they need to have and what you know what what it needs to take to do it, and they're not doing that, then yeah, there's, there's no, no exactly. It's, it's just, no need for you to even waste 
it's your time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's just. Because yeah. isn't? Do you believe that there's still artist development? Like do you, yes. Do you, okay. Yes, I believe there's producer development too. Like mm. I, I, I mean, I talk about it. Well, no, I just think that. Like, like the 10,000 hour rule, like everybody wants to talk about it, but that's very, very real. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people that do it day and night, they're where they're at because they do it day and night. Right. You know, and um, just, I mean, even Andrew, I've seen Andrew make a beat in five minutes and yeah. he can do that in five minutes because he's been doing it every day for the past, what, probably 20 years? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, that's what it boils down to. And that's why, you know, their prices are different than you know, other people's prices. Right. It's just, like, I mean, that's just, you get in, you get out of it what you put into it. Big facts. Yeah. Big facts. Now, walk us through the uh, through the day in life of your, um, your, like, I guess when you go to the studio or how you, when you make your bead or that type of thing. Can you walk us through a day in the life of yourself? Oh, man. I, <laughs> man, I got my, I got my daughter a lot of the time. I'm, fin- mm. I'm finessing every day. Every second of the day, people don't even talk people, about that. People, side people of don't it even too. realize it, man. My daughter too, man. She, Ooh. she, yeah, she, she a handful. I love her to death, though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love being there, <laughs> being able to be there and hang out with her and everything. Of but, course. but yeah, man, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely hard. I'm definitely up till two, three a.m. a lot of nights and up at seven because you know nap time is like, all right, cool. I can finally get some done yep. for like. But God, she's getting old now to the point where I don't know if it's an hour or if it's going to be four hours. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whenever she was younger, it was like, word, I get three, three naps you today, already knew. four, four, four. Like, all right, cool. Nah, yeah, yeah. I get it because yeah. I have an eight year old. I've listen between him and I, it, 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 it used to be like, man, because he like I said, he he's done this for ever since I've known him. So. Mm-hmm. This is his day and night. This is his, and then I've also been in the industry for over twenty years as well. So when when we had the, our child, it was just like, oh shit, we got to make this happen, and it happened. And I I definitely understand. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. My wife definitely holds me down. Of course, know, she's of a course. Uh, she's an RN though, so she's working them twelve hour shifts. Exactly. And then by the time she gets home, she's burnt out. You know, God bless her. Like everything crazy at the at the hospital and everything, but. You know, I mean, that that's why I say, like, you have to, you get out of it what you put into it. Mm-hmm. Like, if I say I'm going to, I got this that I need to send tonight, I'm going to be up all night probably doing it. Right. And that's just what it is. I mean, even a lot of my studio sessions are at night until whenever. I mean, I've I've had sessions till 5 a.m. before. Mm-hmm. Go home and mm-hmm. then it's kind of great. So waking up, me and 12 come home from Philly and it'd be like 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then it's, you know. It's you know, a process. Yeah, Terrell don't Terrell don't get tired. I don't Mm-mm. understand. I, me either. I don't I'm understand. Like, bro, like you just got here, you about to do all this now, and then he just keep he's consistent, and that's what also another thing that a lot of people are not some sometimes are being consistent. And so, how does how is being consistent, or can you explain how the the importance of being consistent is to those that are watching and listening? Um, man, if you're not gonna be consistent, don't even do it. You're wasting your own time, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's all I got to say about it. I mean, you know, if you can't, if you can't commit, then there's no point because you're just going to keep starting over or you're just going to keep, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to build any momentum. Right. And that's all this is, is just momentum. It's a whole momentum base. Even if you're not an artist, you know. And how do you, so how do you go about, um, well, I know you work ex- do you work exclusively with Terrell right now, or is it just? Yeah, no, nah, me and him. Yeah, yeah, we're we're pretty much locked in. Okay, yeah. okay, because I was gonna ask if there were other artists that you also work with. Or... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I work with Trez, um, Trez Hopkins, and um, shout out to Trez. He was a yeah, kid. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, that's my boy. I've known him since like ninth grade. But, wow. Um, but yeah, no, nah, like I mean, I, I'm just at this point where like I don't, I don't like unless it makes sense. I'm not really gonna go out of my way to work with anybody else to be completely honest with you like just because like I mean I have so much other stuff going on it's Mm -hmm. just like I can't even I can't even wrap my brain around trying to develop a sound for another artist or anything you know what I mean right so Mm -hmm. okay and speaking of um that like do you got how do you what is the recording process for the both of you all or for the ones that you do record a Terrell, look, 
<laughs> he'll come. <laughs> look, <laughs> he will come to Virginia, bro, mm -hmm. and be like, "All right, look, we're going to Philly this day." I'm like, "Okay, cool, we're going to Philly, and we'll get like a 12 hour block at the least." Mm -hmm. And all, the whole way up there, bro, he's playing me records he has recorded that he needs the beats made, remade to, and everything else. Like, nah, bro, like, this one's going to be hard, but I need this and that. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and then we get there with with uh, his uh, producer engineer up there. And then, you know, we playing through the records again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we just, um, we just, uh, we just, like, get to work from there. And, yeah, me and, uh, me and Nick, that's the... Um, that's the engineer up there. We just, um, we just get to it and just kind of like tag in, tag out, and you know, Terrell got the sweatshop going, like, because <laughs> he'll but, set up anywhere. Like, oh yeah, I know. We was in, we will, look, we was in hotel rooms. We were, yeah, I already know. I already know. I already know. But I mean, that's what it takes, though, and that's right. what that's what that's what people need to understand. Because I mean, like, we could sit here and laugh about of this all all day, but at the end of the day, like. You don't need a big, huge studio or anything. Right. Like, I mean, I've heard his engineer stuff that we've recorded in a hotel room. Like, he he makes it sound exactly how it needs to sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. It's just, you can pretty much get this done anywhere. And Facts. Terrell is definitely the type of person where he's going to get it done anywhere. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So, um, let's move forward to um, our next, which is our next... Um, topic which is the apparel line did the apparel line come before the foundation or did the um which one came first i'd say um they probably came about the same time about the same because i mean okay. with the clothes i really just um it's funny it was like once i really like learned sales and everything so like mm -hmm. really probably the clothing line is probably like six seven months old maybe so yeah the foundation probably came first the foundation definitely came first but um yeah, so with the clothes, I just kind of um, did, um, I just needed something else to sell other than beats to people that didn't rap. Right. Yeah, it's just, you know, because <laughs> I mean, because I, cause I knew people wanted to support. Right. Just, I, you know, people don't, rappers don't buy beats as it is. So it was like, all right, cool. Like, and, you know, I learned how to sell by selling Terrell stuff. So, um, you know, I just got my own, my own stuff together, really, because I wanted to just be at the point where I'm kind of just wearing just my stuff and right. his stuff and it was cost efficient and still look fresh all that but you know it's just um yeah I really just yeah I mean really it was for me at the end of the day I'm mm -hmm. not even gonna lie it was definitely for me <laughs> but but you know like I said I started to realize that people wanted support in some other way so so yeah. what is um what is your um apparel line? Is it shirts, t shirts? Um I I got uh, tees, uh snapbacks, uh the dad hats and um crew necks. And where and can, joggers. Where can they find that at? Um my website is in the middle of being redone, but it's mikewaves.com. Okay. Where, where it's all gonna be. It'll be it'll be back up in November. I'm okay. just I'm just doing a whole reboot. Yep. Whole, <laughs> whole yeah, whole reboot. <laughs> And so let's get into the foundation. Why, why did you um, create the foundation and, you know, what is it giving back to the culture? So really, um, it was actually my boy, Soup. Um, he had called me God, it was probably two years ago and he was like, yo, I want to do a nonprofit. And he was just, he, and mind you, I've, I had known him since I was like probably 16, 17 years old. And, um, yeah, he had called me and just said that he wanted to do a nonprofit that he thinks it would align perfectly with my brand. You know, we already had a relationship prior mm -hmm. and he was just explaining it to me. And then me and him really came up with um, the Ways Foundation, which is, you know, based off really giving kids um, just an opportunity and head start. Gotcha. You know, so like basically what, what the end goal really is, is to where like, you know, how when you're in high school, you can go to a tech center and get the HVAC yeah. stuff or stuff like that. Just kind of give them a head start with financial literacy and, you know, producing the business side of everything and, you know, start, you know, trying to do summer camps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, we just had an event probably like a month ago and it was just a, you know, school supply drive. We partnered with a church and we, um, you know, we gave all that, um, all the supplies back to Richmond public schools and, um, and yeah, really, it's just, you know, it's just, um, just to really be able to give back and provide opportunity. Mm. 
And you, when was that created? You said. Um. Well, we just got the. Um. We got everything like. Um. Uh. On paper and everything. Um. Probably like six months ago, we got it all established. Like the LLC and everything, gotcha, and gotcha, you know, got gotcha. our actual nonprofit. Um status and all that sorry okay. i had like a brain fart <laughs> yeah, <I'm> just... <laughs> we all yeah, have it because you know. I, I had it earlier it's okay so what are you um currently working on um right now um right now i'm um actually working on a um, business that is um directed mainly at like influencers and entertainment for um websites and um stuff like that just to help their brand um get noticed through more than just instagram and facebook because you know instagram and facebook just went down as we all know didn't yeah, didn't know if it was going to come back up or not but that just goes to show you like everybody needs a website you know and they need to you know own their own domains and all that stuff just because you know that's where a majority of the money is going to be coming in from and even um even artists like they don't even realize like a lot of the, like like a lot of people are getting these um getting the streams and everything through the ads. So, you know, you connect the Facebook pixel to your website, you run the ads through Facebook, then you can see your target market and all that, um, you know, just on the back end of your website. And you can really see who's clicking, who's who's watching, who's buying, all that. And then the more you use it, the price per click goes down. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I've just been... I've just been doing that, to be honest with you, just the websites and um, really just trying to figure out how I can um, how I can help in another way. Is it all based out of um, Virginia? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keeping it in the home base. <clears throat> Excuse me. And speaking of the home base, how do you feel about the whole uh, Pharrell situation with the something in the water um, we can't be dilemma? Right <laughs> you can't be mad at it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I hadn't really been keeping up, but I mean, I remember when it happened. Um, well, where was it? Was it outside of Beach House? Um, where the shooting happened? I think so. If I'm not mistaken. Ocean, Ocean Front. It was Ocean Front. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I like, I'm, 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 I'm remember it all happened. Like the body cam wasn't on and all that. I mean, I probably would have done the same thing. Right. Can't. I mean, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but I mean, it is what it is because, you know, I mean, it like that something in the water was, you know, that was that was a big deal for sure. It was a very big deal for sure. And then especially the one that was going to be coming up because this one was going to highlight a lot of the local talent, because I think you were able to submit, you know, you can you can perform or they were going to have a showcase or something of that nature they were going to do for specifically for the local talent. So it that would have been. A whole I didn't different even know thing. That. Yeah. yeah, you were you were able to submit your music, and if you wanted to perform, they were you know you had to go through this whole long situation, and then that was it. Because I think who who did I submit for? I think I submitted for one of the artists that was um out of here. So it is what it is. I don't know. That's just Slayer. Yeah, that's a whole nother topic, and it's just who knows. It 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 might come back. Mm -hmm. You never so, know. So do you think we have a an outlet now that that is necessarily not going to be here um what do you mean by outlet outlet as far as like for the talent in this area because you know look it's the, <laughs> the internet is an outlet Facts. all right like you don't need to like see and this is where people get all this messed up push a t and all them like they can't save everybody right you know okay. what i'm saying okay and it's like and even if they do let's say they break you or whatever like you like how much you really gonna be getting paid out of that record deal? Then you're just gonna be pissed because you're not you're not making how much you think you're supposed to be making. When in reality, they had the capital, they put the money behind you, and they made the call. So, yeah. you know, it's just you know this goes back to what I was saying about the Facebook pixel and all that. You got you got to run ads, and it'll catch. You know, and that's how your build that's how you build your leverage. Like everybody wonders how everybody getting all these YouTube views and all that, but they're not like going and paying for fake views. They're running ads right. to get the views. So it's all organic. You know what I mean? But, right. you know, if you're not if you're not doing that, then I mean, you, you're you're not going to get put in the algorithm at all. Right. You know what I mean? If so you're not putting in that work. Yeah. I mean, we're we're literally in a pay to play era as much mm. as people don't want to like admit it. But, yeah, we are. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's 
Yeah, that's crazy. So um, what is some advice that you can leave this thing called entertainment? Um, work hard and save your money. Stack that bread. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. No, no. You're right, though. I mean, yeah, you, you got to. Because, I mean, that's because, you know, it goes back to, you know. You got to have the capital. If you don't have the capital, you're going to get left behind. And you might be you might be the dopest artist or producer or whatever. But if you don't have the money to put behind your brand and invest back into yourself, then there's no need. No need. Like, I mean, it's just it it also just depends on where you want to take it. Because, I mean, obviously, word to mouth, you can do that locally and all that. But you're not going to you're not going to get to where you really want to be without the capital. Mm. Gotcha. Y'all heard it. So let's move on to top five, which is a segment. Um, uh, five questions, five answers catered to you, my guests. So, um, top five beats you've made. Um, probably like they're all probably on uh, Terrell's next project. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, no, yeah, just to just, be. For, just with I'm gonna put Terrell online. Yeah. Boom. All five. All right. <laughs> Top five collaborations you would like to do? Um, Just with other artists? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, gotta, if, if I could work with Yo Gotti and Jeezy, um, Gucci, um, even, um, I, I think a Wale record would be hard, too. Okay. Um, you got one more. And then... Um, <laughs> Probably uh, a party next door. Party next door. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, top five artists in your city. Um, God, you're gonna make me do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Noah O. I'm definitely gonna say Noah O. Um, Slim Cartel got some hard records. Um. Um, Trez Hopkins, uh, Mikey Amore, and um, I, um, I'm gonna say myself. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Oh, you're an artist as well. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, you dibble I've, and dabble. Well, no, I mean, I'm just, you know, how like DJ Khaled, Mike will put out, understood. Their, yeah, mm-hmm. so it's like, you know, with throwaways and stuff, I'll I'll put out albums and stuff if I can get it cleared and all that. Wow, I kn- I didn't know that. We got to hear some of that. Um, okay, so final one is top five moments in your career. Um, I'd say being in ID Labs, that was pretty. That was definitely dope. Um, you know, um. Doing a radio run with um, Airwave with Batman and really like meeting Push T and everything. That was dope. Dope. Um, going to LA with Andrew, that definitely changed my life 2017. Um, it's funny, Skip of the Flip actually walked in his session. He didn't even realize who it was. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it's just, it's just funny. I always look back on that and uh, just like laugh because Andrew was just so locked in, didn't even realize he walked in. Um, Two more. Um, I'd say coming up here and going to Tower Studio in Portsmouth. Um, I met a, I, I met so many artists in, mm. in, in uh, that studio. It's a shame they closed. And um, going up to Atlanta, definitely. Okay, okay. So um, let's move on to the exclusive access. Um, exclusive access is another segment I like to do, um, where you can just share with our friends, because once we do an interview together, we are friends, uh, that you have something exclusive to tell them. Yeah. So, um, basically, uh, that company I was talking about influence optimizer, um, I'm basically going to be doing, um, websites and, um, you know, we can do digital ads and, um, really just branding and uh, stuff of that nature um i'm gonna be launching a website probably probably top of the year to where you know we can acquire and um, all that i'll have my portfolio up there and um really just basically the purpose of it is really just to help artists get 
to the next level and um, make sure everything on their sites and everything look how it's supposed to. So if someone was, so if they showed somebody, it, I don't want to say looks like things are bigger than they are, but you know, everything's perception. Right. And there's that in, in this industry. So, um, I'm looking to, um, I'm looking into getting to UX design too, which is basically like you go to a website or you're on an app and just makes it's how user friendly it is. So like, I'm really like, I'm really looking into getting super deep into, um, into that side of things. And then hopefully being able to partner with a couple other people just to kind of make it almost a one-stop shop. Shout out to you. Because <laughs> I hate going to artist pages and it does it hasn't been updated since the copyright says 2018. Like I look at stuff like that and I just be like, you haven't updated your website since 2018 and that's not okay. With me. Yeah, no. And that's a turn off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if they've updated it and they don't change the date. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but um, but no, people don't understand. They're like, you know, like having a website and all that, it just it just opens a whole lot of doors. Like yeah. you can really like even if you're an artist, you can sell your merch and all that. Yep. Everything's in one space. And if you showcase it right, you'll get the clicks. And you know, the back end SEO is ads in itself. Yep. It's just showing up on Google. The you know, analytics, all that. All yeah, that. That's yeah. Important. It's just yeah, and you know, like COVID definitely should have shown everybody, you know, that the world's changing. Yeah. So, you know, time, <laughs> right. to, time to go digital. Because <laughs> everything, even Walmart is not taking cash. They all taking credit cards. Facts. That's the, uh, what is it? The cash out, the self checkout. Yep. You can't do no cash. If it is, it's like one, maybe two machines. Everything else. Or it's is, exact change. Yeah. Listen, I yeah. said, listen, y'all is getting it not so personal no more. Y'all, everything is digital, electronics, or no, what? No, it's a fact. Robot world. We about to turn into goddamn. That's gonna be oof. That's yeah, that's a whole. It's, no, it's it's gonna get scary out here. It's of already course. getting scary. That's why yeah, it's we like, had to walk. We had to walk and dead at one point. Now we're gonna have robots and, and everybody looking, just sitting around chilling, acting like shit purge. not even happening. Yeah, the purge is happening. It's like listen, it's crazy. This life we live in is is is, is uh uh-uh. I can't. I ain't got time. But anywho, uh, we are down to the final twenty minutes of our interview. Uh, and I thank you for um for being here but we're going to do the shout out social media last words and then i have one final question which is the question of the day in which we will have you answer here shortly so you can go ahead and give your shout outs and uh where they can find you and uh whatever you want to leave them with as far as like what you're working on cool. <laughs> um you know shout out to uh terrell online batman um my wife um my daughter um you know uh Rocky over there with the camera. Um, and, um, you know, Octavian, and the list just keeps going. I can't, I can't name everybody, but you, you all can follow me at, at Mike Waves. That's M I K E W A V S. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So the question of the day is what bothers you about the industry and what will be your solution to fixing it? Um, Really just, um, if you do want to get a, um, get a job, like doing some type of background stuff, it's, I mean, you can go to school, but none of that really matters. And I think that if you go to school, you should at least be able to, it should be easier to get some type of job doing it. Right. You know, and you shouldn't have to move across the country or move, you know, wherever, you know, I think a lot of these jobs could be remote, but you know, that's just me. Cause you, especially after the pandemic, if every if most of these companies can become remote, then I'm pretty sure then it, it can happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and you know, and and also something else is just you know during the pandemic, these labels they didn't do, they didn't do shit, but mm-hmm. somehow we were able to put together a whole promo tour, and go all the way up from Syracuse down to Atlanta. But it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's more to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for being my special guest today. Follow me, your girl, Miss Hollywood, M-I-S-S Hollywood 313. Follow the page, So Hollywood the Podcast. And like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube page video. Um, if there's anything else that you want to leave them, um, you can go ahead and do it now. If not, we're going to get up out of here. Yeah, no, I'm good. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it me or is it hiding here? Is it me or is it hiding here?
was it high? 